Welcome fans to a special episode of The Spread. I am your host Jim Sella here with Jay Dash. We got our Steelers Week 3 preview. We got a special guest host this week live from somewhere near Baltimore, Dave Gardner. Gardner, where the hell do you actually live? I'm over on the Eastern Shore in Cambridge, Maryland. The nice Cambridge. part. How far is that from me? I'm in Martinsburg. Uh, we're probably like three and a half hours, probably, I'd imagine. That's too I'm whole, far. I'm whole, whole way down the East Coast there, next to Ocean City. Too far for me, buddy. We'll have to we'll have to talk via Skype. No home visits. Dash, the yes. Steelers pulled it out last week against the Minnesota Vikings. Sam Bradford did not play. Case Keenum, not good enough to beat a defense uh, as good as the Steelers, especially in a home opener. I know we're not doing a recap, but, but we, we can always talk about this game for a few minutes, right? Two minutes? Three yeah. minutes? Yeah, sure, man. What do you want to know? What do you think would have happened if Bradford would have played? Would it have been any different? Yeah, I think it would have been a closer game for sure, man. Uh, the defense looked good, but against Sam Bradford, I, I know he's not a beast or anything, but, yeah, I believe it would have been a different game for sure. And offensively, I mean, yeah, the run game looked better for Pittsburgh, but still, I mean, on most of their scoring drives, the biggest plays came from uh, hidden yardage, really. It was two pass interference calls got them down the field, and then on another drive, what was it? There was someone jumped off sides, and Big Ben just went deep to Mortavis Bryant because of it, and it worked out that time. But the offense, it looks better. Mortavis Bryant looked a little better. Eli Rogers looked pretty good in this game, but still, I, I want to see a lot more from him moving forward. It was a nice victory. You felt like the Steelers had it through the whole game, especially with Case Keenum at quarterback. It was good to see Le'Veon Bell get a little better get a little more yards. I still want to see that offensive line block a little better. I read on social media that uh, Al Villanueva lost 20 pounds in the week leading up to the game because of some sickness and the heat up there in Pittsburgh. So that's why he played like crap. Uh, there, this offensive line needs to play better if they think they're going to be able to run the ball like they did last year. Yeah, you, you got to... Uh look at Minnesota too. They're a very good run defense. So I think they did a pretty good job. It does got to get better like you stated, but I think they did a pretty good job considering the opponent and everything. What did uh, Le'Veon end up with? 80 some yards? 87 I believe. So not terrible. No. All right, so moving into week three, the Steelers are going into Chicago to take on a terrible Bears team. The Steelers have only won one time in Chicago. Is that going to matter this week, Gardner? No way. I mean, these guys, the, the team they're playing is not the Chicago of the past. This isn't the Erlacher. You know, it, it's, it's Mike Glennon. It's a Prince of Loop, however you spell it or pronounce his last name. That's Luke the best Mara. person. He's terrible right now. He's not even <laughs> playing, is he? They're, they're, these guys are in the twilight of their careers on a bad team. They're trying to rebuild. Uh, well, they have uh, Howard on as a running back, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, can you name anybody on their team that's worth a shit? Well, they got that Tara Cohen, I think his name is. He's another running back out there, actually, and he's had a pretty good first two weeks. He's been used heavily in the passing game. But you mentioned Jordan Howard. Last week, nine carries, seven yards, so he did nothing against Tampa Bay. Yeah, the Bears' offense is only averaging 12 points per game. Glennon's not really getting it done. Uh, any chance you guys think we see Mitch Trubitsky in this game if it becomes a blowout? I could say absolutely because, I mean, what do they have to lose besides fan base? You know, they want, to, they, they, they're gonna, they, want they want someone who's going to uh, put butts in his seats. And, you know, he's a he's a first-round pick. They're going to, you know, I, I would imagine they're going to put him in. What do you think? Yeah, if this game gets out of hand, I could see it. I think they want to give Glennon another shot, though. If you go back to week one, they, they put up a pretty decent effort against one of the best teams in the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. That was a home game. Last week they went in the Tampa Bay, got blown out. I think coming back home they want to give Glennon one more shot here. But if it, if it starts to get to be a blowout, I could definitely see Trubisky make a, a entrance into this game. So you want to hear something interesting. The Steelers are 16th in yards per game offensively. The Bears are 21st. Only seven yards behind the Steelers, so not really that far. Passing yards per game, the Steelers are 11th, the Bears are 15th. 
and rushing yards per game. The Steelers are 29th and the Bears are 26th. It's crazy to see these teams statistically lined up uh, alongside each other, considering the amount of talent on offense on the Steelers and the lack thereof on the Bears. Kevin White's out. Uh, what Mark Marcus Wheaton's not playing. Also on Jeffrey, is he even there anymore? He's not even there, right? No, he's not there anymore. They, they got uh, they nobody. Got Kendall. They just got Howard and Cohen. They got Kendall Wright out there. He was a pretty decent receiver, third receiver out there in Tennessee, I guess. So uh, 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 he's not a number one for sure, but he had a pretty good week last week as well. Yeah, neither is Marcus Wheaton. No offense to Marcus, you know he had some good years in Pittsburgh or a couple. At least he tried. Yeah, but, I mean they, they games. don't have. Yeah, games. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he he's just not the threat. You know, Pittsburgh has so many offense. There's so many ways to beat you. Not to sound like a complete homer, but it's true. They can beat you in the run game. They can beat you, obviously, in their wide receivers. I mean, hell, uh, their tight ends got two touchdowns. Or, uh, old Jesse James got two touchdowns the first game. You know, who saw that one coming? Their defense has – or had two defensive uh, – or defensive touchdowns the first games against – or, I'm sorry, one defensive touchdown the first game against Cleveland. I mean, they can beat you in more ways than one, you know. I, I think we're going to see that in Chicago because I, I just don't think they got the horses in the race. I'm really impressed by this defense early on in the season. They're ranked sixth in points allowed, third in yards, fifth in passing yards, and eighth in rushing yards. But people need to temper expectations because they need to realize we've played two garbage offenses with one quarterback who could be good in Kaiser, and then Case Keenum, who shouldn't even be allowed to hold a jock strap, let alone play football. Yeah, they're, they they have played absolutely no one. But you know, everyone has to you, you you play the teams that are in front of you. You know, you can't expect anything else. Yeah, I agree. But I, I don't think this week they're going to be playing that great of a quarterback either. I, maybe uh, Joe Flacco is going to be the first respectable quarterback that they're going to play, and it's not like he's great either. Dude's beat. Their defense looks all right, though. Dash, can they keep getting to the quarterback at the same rate they're doing now? They have nine sacks through the first two games. Well, what'd they have? Seven sacks in that first game, just two sacks last week? Yeah. So Yeah, I'm more or less the two to three sack per game range. Obviously, they're not going to come out and get seven. Yeah, as long as they stay healthy, I think they can get to him two, three, maybe four times per game. Well, not four times per game, but four times every now and again. I think they can get to the quarterback, but they they got to stay away from these injuries. we already seen a few. Yeah, T.J. Watt has that groin injury. He's still up in the air for a Week 3 matchup. Anthony Ciccolo, interestingly enough, came in and played last week when Watt came out instead of James Harrison. Uh, Dash, I, I'm, I messaged you like a few plays after it happened. You know, We were both pretty interested in seeing Ciccolo out there over Harrison. Social, social media erupted after the game. They were pissed that Harrison didn't get in. People said Harrison left the locker room without even talking to reporters in that game. Do you think he's upset he did not play a single snap in that Week 2 matchup? Well, I'd be unhappy, wouldn't you? I would be. Tomlin said that they're going to use James whenever they need him, and he knows that there'll be a big moment and a big game, and James will come up in a big way. Well, I mean, I said that earlier this season. You want to use him against Baltimore. That's when he plays at his best. But still, you want to get him some playing time during the season so when you do need him later in the season, he's ready. You don't want to just sit him for four weeks and then say, go out there and get it done. I'm not upset that Chicolo came in at all. Chicolo played really well. I was just surprised that with Watt out, Harrison got zero snaps. You figured you would have seen him in there even every fourth drive maybe or even just a few plays per drive. Yeah, that's what I'd say, too. Just give him a little bit of playing time, have him ready for when you really do need him. Right now, it looks like they feel like they don't even need him. I'm, surpri- I'm surprised they're not using him for obvious passing downs because obviously you don't want to or, – or, yeah, for rushing downs whenever he's going to attack quarterback. But, I mean, you don't, you don't want him in there like on second down whenever they're going to throw a screen because, I mean, he is a beast and all, and you don't want him coming after you as a quarterback, but do you want him covering, you know, a shifty running back? Almost a liability. Yeah, I, yeah I totally years agree. old. I'm, I'm really not too concerned with his playing time early in the year. Uh, if he's going to play and play well, I'd rather it be late in the season and playoff time. Yeah, you do want yeah, him absolutely. to stay healthy for sure. But uh, like I said, man, you can't just sit him for 
weeks at a time and expect oh, you yeah. to come in at 100% ready to go. I obviously agree. The, the one thing I want to say, too, real quick before we move on is the team has been desperately trying to get Harrison to not have to play every down. And that's not a knock on Harrison, but he's 39 years old. They drafted Jarvis Jones. They tried and tried and tried to get that guy acclimated to the defense and playing well, and it just didn't work. So it's it's actually a good thing that this has happened. It means they have hit on T.J. Watt. They've hit on Anthony Ciccolo, Bud Dupree. They have the young core of linebackers that they really need. So I don't see why people see this as a negative. Like Dash said, get them in there a few plays, keep them fresh, but, you know, still loose. Dash, can the Steelers' running game get back to where it's supposed to be? Uh, the Bears have the 15th-ranked rush defense in the league, giving up about 90 yards per game. Late in the season last year, Le'Veon was getting chunks yardages, yardage. He was gouging defenses on single runs. Haven't seen a lot of those big runs, if any, really, other than late in the game yesterday. He sealed the game, or not yesterday, last week. He sealed the game with uh, that late run to get the first down so the Steelers could run out the clock. Can that def- can that offense get back to where it should be, running the football 100, 150 yards a game? This week? This week. I I'm not so sure it's going to happen this week just because it's on the road, man. I think what, what their breakout game is going to come at home. Chicago, they let, they let up 117 yards on the ground last week, but it was on 34 carries. So uh, Tampa Bay stayed with that running game. I don't, I don't think Pittsburgh really is going to uh, stay with that running game like that if it, if it isn't working out. But I think they'll run kind of like they did against Minnesota last week. It looked a lot better than week one but it wasn't a a complete breakout game. I think uh, uh, that's going to come either next week or in a a couple weeks from now. You have some guys who I I think who have the ability to absolutely be mashers. Like, the Castro hasn't been playing great. Like, he hasn't been playing bad. Uh, Bill Nueva obviously uh, hasn't been playing up to par. And uh, there was another injury last week. Who's the opposite, or Bill Nueva? Gilbert. Yeah, Gilbert, he had an injury there for a little while, too, where they had Finney come in, and then Bill and Nueva actually had to come back in. So last week, I mean, they looked better, but their offensive line was not playing as good as they can be. So to answer your question, can they? Of course they can. Will they? I mean, I'm, I wish I, I – you know, I'll call Miss Cleo right before the game. Well, I'll tell you then. Call me now for your free reading. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say one thing about last week, uh, or actually the, the year altogether. I'm going to give a shout-out to the uh, the defensive line. Even with two at the out, Alulu has been playing like a stud. No one can stop uh, Hayward and Hargraves. I mean, did you see him just bull rush uh, the center from Cleveland? Yeah. He's basically hugged. Oh, that was that was awesome. Like I, I want to see that every. You know, obviously you can't see it every play, but I want to see that once a game from him because he can do it. He's fast off that snap, and those guys aren't used to uh, – nose guard just coming at him like that yeah i'm excited about this defense i i do want to see what it looks like against a top five at top even top 10 quarterback at some point this season i don't know when they're even going to play one i think our next i mean the, you're going to play flacco and i think after that to be honest with you the next good team coming is probably the chiefs week seven not that i mean not that alex smith is top flight but he's been playing top flight you know yeah he doesn't turn the ball over too much I think he's a pretty decent quarterback and if he's even if he's not great that offense as a whole is pretty good so that that will definitely be a matchup to look out for Mm -hmm. did you guys know with two catches on Sunday Antonio Brown will become the fastest player to 650 catches in the history of the game wow I know it had to be coming up sometime, man. He's a stud. Marvin Harrison was first at 107 games. If Brown does it this week against the Bears, he will have done it in 103 games. Or 104, I'm sorry. Yeah, regardless, that's some uh that's 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 a big name to stand up there to you know, to match up to. I'm Especially pretty sure Big a... Ben moved into ninth place all time in completions also. Yeah, I've seen he's yeah, up in the top cool. ten in five five or six different categories now, man. Dude's a beast, just like I said, Dash, Hall of Famer. <laughs> you wanted to put him in the Hall of Fame eight years ago. <laughs> Why not? Oh, Here's I did a question see on... for you. Go ahead. Is Roethlisberger going to have any 500-yard games this year like he's had the last two? I think he's had two in each. 
or one and one and two. I'd have to look at their schedule. Right now, it doesn't look like it's going to happen unless a couple more of these receivers start to get into mid-season form. But I would yeah. say, I'm going to say, yeah, maybe not a 500-yard passing game. I'm going to say he has a five-touchdown game, though, for over 400 yards. Dude's going to put up 500 on the Bengals both time he plays them. <laughs> <laughs> they are just absolutely terrible. I haven't seen anything like that since Cleveland a couple of years ago. There be. Dash, <laughs> I did see on social media when Mike Tomlin was asked why James Harrison uh, was descending or dropping on the depth chart, he simply replied, is James dropping or are other players ascending? That's a typical Tomlin comment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. But he's right, if it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I believe that. I don't think James Harrison has fallen apart or anything. I just think they want to get these other guys playing time. But I'm just surprised that he's getting no playing time at this point. Does anybody on this Bears offense scare either one of you? Do they really have a chance offensively? I'm not saying the Steelers are going to come out and blow them out. And, I mean, all three of us have watched enough Steeler football to know that they could struggle on the road. But this year feels a little different to me. It feels like a different Steeler team, a more disciplined Steeler team. Do the Bears have a chance? I, I mean, I know they do, but do they have better than a 20% chance? Um, No. <laughs> I would like to <laughs> I mean, like, I really want to say yet. yes because, you, you know, you always have a chance. You're at home. But they just, I mean, it's Mike Glennon. It's Marcus Wheaton, who's hurt, by the way. He, he has a finger injury. He got the coat syndrome. Um, yeah, I mean, no. I would say Jordan Howard looks like one of the better running backs in football. He had a terrible week last week. We know the Steelers' defense is good at stopping the run. If Howard can't get that run game going this week, I don't think Chicago really has any chance. But there is that Cohen I mentioned earlier as well, man. He's been used heavily in the passing game, and we know Pittsburgh has been beat by the uh, running back coming out of the backfield in the passing game a few times. So I'd worry about him a little bit more in this game, I think, than I would Jordan Howard. But I, I think they have to get that run game going, or there's really no chance. I don't think Mike Glennon can go out there and beat him on his own. Yeah, I think the Steelers' defense is a little different than the last few years. They're better, they're stronger, they're faster, they're younger. So even if the offense struggles, I just I, I can't see the defense really letting the Bears run wild on them. They're yeah, not Chris I, I Hogan, think, brother. I, I think they're going to have eight men in the box the majority of the time, and they're going to try to make London try to beat them, and I, I just don't see it happening. Not that the secondary is the, you know, the bee's knees or anything, but it's not good. I mean, their offense just isn't good enough to, to beat them. Dash, you got any questions for me this week? Yeah, I'll give you guys three questions here. First question, I already mentioned Chicago had no run game last week. The Steelers have been good against the run this season. Jordan, Jordan Howard and Cohen together had 20 yards rushing on 16 carries. Do they get over 40 yards rushing combined in this game? Combined, I'm going to say yeah. I think the Bears can rush for 60 to 70 yards as a team. Singularly, I don't think either one really has a chance to get over maybe 50, and that's if they get used exclusively with the Howard injury. Uh, you think Cohen's probably going to get the majority of the carries. You might even see Howard sit down, especially if the Steelers get out to a big lead somehow. Uh, so no, I, I don't think that, that they're going to – 60 to 70, that's it. Uh, yeah, I'd have to say 60. 60 sounds about right. Between the two of them, 60, maybe maybe 70, somewhere in between there. Mike, I can't see it being any more. Mike Glennon had over 300 yards passing that last week, mostly because they were playing from behind the whole game and they had to pass, and it's a reason why they didn't have much rushing as well. Does Mike Glennon get over or under 250? Oh, man, that's a good one. Uh, it's I want to say under because you think the Steelers should be able to hold them. But at the same time, if they shut down that run game, then the Bears are just going to be forced to throw. And if he ends up throwing the ball 40 or 50 times, I mean, just by the rule of numbers, he's probably going to get up there, especially in garbage time. 250 dash, I say he gets like 270-ish. So I'm going to go over again. 
let's see, the first game they had about 235. The second game they had, their first game they had, yeah, somewhere between 210 and 230. I'm going to give them 225. I think that's what they get in the air. I, I honestly don't think they're going to score. They didn't score any points last week until the fourth quarter in garbage time. Uh, they're, they're not going to get any. I, I say 230 tops. And they're not going to score a touchdown. They'll probably score one touchdown at some point just because it's you have to eventually. They'll give <laughs> up like a draw play or something stupid. I think <laughs> the Bengals. <laughs> I think Antonio Brown is the only player with over a hundred yards in a game so far this season. Does anyone else do it in this game for Pittsburgh? Yeah, I think Le'Veon comes out and has a decent decent game. Um, maybe not 100 yards rushing, but I think he's going to get 100 yards from scrimmage. I think you're going to be able to see Bell start getting more involved in the offense. He's been there a few weeks in practice now. He's been there for two games. You're going to start to see him do what he normally does. Uh, this offensive line, you got to think, is going to come together at some point. If Villanueva can get some strength back and put some weight back on, they should really be right back to where they need to be. So I'm going to say Le'Veon Bell has like 115, 125, somewhere in between there, yards from scrimmage. It's really going to depend on who the defense gives them because the, the thing is with Pittsburgh's offense is that you can't guard everybody. Um, I would like to see, you know, I, I think Le'Veon's up. I think it's, it's going to be his game because they're not going to let Bryant do what they did to um, the Vikings last week, and they're not going to, you know, they're obviously going to double team Antonio Brown because if you don't, you're you're kind of dumb. So something's going to open up, and it's probably going to be Le'Veon Bell out of the backfield, you know, catching passes because that's what he does best. That's what that's why he's getting paid, you know, what twelve million dollars a year this year, and that's why he's asking fifteen or seventeen because he's that good out of the backfield. He can make big plays happen, explosive plays, and uh, yeah, I think Le'Veon Bell, but always obviously you could do Brian or Bell or Brown as well. Keys to victory. Dash, this is a trap game, I think. Not that they're going to lose, but it's it's got that feel of a trap game. The Steelers so far, they feasted on quarterbacks who weren't too good. They put consistent pressure on the quarterback. Uh, seven sacks the first week, two sacks last week. Uh, they still had, I think, almost ten quarterback pressures in that game against the Vikings, too. So you don't always need to sack the quarterback as long as you're getting in his face, forcing him to throw before he wants to, forcing him to throw off his back foot, making him move around. That's all you got to do to beat a quarterback who's really not that good. Uh, Kaiser Young, Keenum Garbage, Glennon Garbage. <laughs> so if the Steelers want to win this football game, all they got to do is keep consistent pressure on Glennon. He's like a statue back there. He's probably the least mobile starting quarterback. Ben Roethlisberger is old as hell, and his knees are beat, and he can run faster than Glennon if he's running backwards through a tar pit. I mean, it's it's hilarious to watch Glennon try to move. I think the Steelers' defense just needs to put pressure on him, run up the middle on him, just get there. He, he'll, he'll win the game for Pittsburgh because he'll throw a mad pick six. I think pressure of the top or the front seven is yeah you're absolutely right it's 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 those guys that are in the trenches that are going to win this game because in today's NFL you can't cover someone for you know four or five seconds it's almost impossible you know with holding penalties and, and pass interferences so if those guys can get the sacks or you, know, you can pressure the quarterback you can stop the run game I mean they'll win it I mean they'll win almost every game with the offense they have. Yeah, uh, I do want to see this offense put together a couple 70, 80-yard drives in this game. Uh, just look a little bit cleaner than they have the first two weeks of the season. But I think def defensively, you, all you have to do is shut down this run game. It, the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers showed it last week. They, they shut down that run game for Chicago, and they completely blew them out. Mike Lennon cannot beat you on his own, like I said earlier. So I think the key to victory here is just make sure you don't let Howard get going, and we'll see what this Cohen does in the passing game or whatever, but just make sure the run game doesn't beat you, and you should be all right. Real quick question here for you guys. So right now, Anthony Ciccolo and TJ Watt lead the, the team with sacks. Who leads the team with sacks this week? Jim? Mm. I'm going to give it to Bud Dupree. I think he gets the quarterback a few times. Be nice. Yeah, I'd like to see Hargrave get to him up the middle as well, but I'm going to go with Cameron Hayward. I'll say he gets to him once or twice. 
there is a chance that Watt plays in this game, and to it, uh, definitely more of a chance that Watt plays. I did talk to our athletic trainer, Brandon. He says, you know, obviously he didn't diagnose or, or evaluate Watt, but he says with groin injuries, it's going to be tough for a guy to come off the edge and set the edge and have that quick first step. So don't be shocked if you don't see either one of those guys play. Mm. So what's your final prediction here? Well, like I said a little bit ago, I think this is a different Steelers team than it's been in years past. Uh, the, the games where they played down to their opponent, I think the defense, especially late in those games, was really letting up. Uh, big plays downfield for the other offenses kind of screwed them. It's not that defense this year. They're so much better than they were. I, even if the offense sputters, I don't, don't think this defense is going to let them lose. Uh, but it'll be a little closer than most people think, but I'm going to say Pittsburgh 28, uh, Chicago 14. Let's see. I had, uh, let's see, about 260 total yards. Um, I think they'll get a touchdown. I think they'll get two field goals. Pittsburgh. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that breakout. They, you know, they could get 30 at any game, but I just don't think they will. I'm going to say 27-16. Yeah, I'm, I'm going pretty close to that. I'm going to say they score a little bit less, but the defense does let up 16. I'm going to say something around 23-16. But I'll tell you what, if they play like they did against the Cleveland Browns in Week 1, this could be a loss. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I think the Chicago Bears are a little bit better than Cleveland still. I know everybody's saying Cleveland's on the rise a little bit, and they may very well be. But is it, you can't go into Soldier Field and play like you did in Week 1 against Cleveland, or this could be a loss. So it could be a closer game, but I'm going to say 23-16. Yeah, I think the defense is going to get a touchdown itself this week. Glennon's a pick-six machine. The dude's beat. He did throw two picks last week. It's because he sucks. It is because he sucks. I want to see Ryan Shazier get a pick-six. He's due. He's very... Uh, Need to put Willie Gay in. Yeah, Willie Gay gets those mad pick sixes. Ryan <laughs> Shazier is very aerodynamic because he's got no body hair. <laughs> Backed. Anything else, Dash? Nope, that's it, man. Gardner, anything else on your end? No, man, thanks for having me on. Believe it, you're, you're welcome to come on the spread anytime. Fans, if you have any questions or comments for us, hit me up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Or hit my actual Twitter up at Bet Jim the Win. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Come back to YouTube, click subscribe. Over 3,000 views in last week's episode in only, what, two hours, Dash? We're ballers. <laughs>